So this is the uh, Citroen De Chevaux uh, 2CV. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Um, and uh, it has 425 cc's, two cylinder engine and uh, 12 brake horsepower approximately. 425, 425 cc's is basically 0.4 of a litre. Uh, so if you think about your car, most people have them like, oh, it's a 2 litre, it's a 1.9 turbo diesel. This is 0.4, of what, <laughs> which is just tiny. It is, it is absolutely tiny. And what I must say about it is that in this 1957 car, we are two big blokes. Yeah squeezed in but there is enough room for us we're both six foot plus yeah i'm six foot two near enough tim is six foot six near enough and the, look at the i cannot believe the headroom but i've sussed it i've worked out just the the clever engineering that the french actually came up with all the way back then i mean dude it's quite a tight corner down there and this thing pulls off at like oh my word i mean if any even if it, like a lorry comes around there <laughs> we're just gonna get wiped out is that flat out yeah Here we go. <laughs> is that it? Into second. That's absolute dog twad. <laughs> that is so slow. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my phone. I've got a speed app on my phone that can actually tell us uh, just how quickly we're going. Well, I can tell you on the speedo here, we slow. are going 45 kilometers per hour now, 50. Right. No, no, forget 55 that. 55 kilometers per hour. Right, here we go. So the speed we are going is 35 miles per hour. Gun it then, give it some beans. Like, flat. it's like your foot is flat to the ground. Well, that's right. I mean, uh, I'm in overdrive because this is three speeds plus overdrive. Oh, and, well, let, uh, let, yeah, we're uh, we are at uh, we are at maximum velocity. Well, let, no, hang on, let's do a getaway from we're in a we've just done a bank over, we're getting out of town as quickly as we can. So, floor it. I've got okay. Well, I am flooring it 42, 43 downhill. Is that it? 44, 45. Come on! 45 miles per hour. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and we're just being overtaken by everything. Why, it's just like, just, move out of the way. Those are just impatient people. Right, now hang on, keep keep going, keep going, keep that foot down. Because this has come to a slight incline. This is just a very slight, if you were walking it, you wouldn't know it was a hill. And it's <laughs> dropped down from 45 to 34 miles per hour. But it's perfect because at the top of that hill, yeah, but that's perfect because at the top of that incline, we had a corner. So it's a safety feature. I'll tell you what, one thing I've noticed is, dude, it is so comfortable. It's like driving around on a really, really bouncy NAND sofa. Well, that's right. The suspension is superb. And then, of course, you've got the seats, which are basically deck chairs. And on the deck chairs, you've got springs that are suspending the material that you sit upon. And yeah, look, yeah, so, so, so they are just like the old school chairs where these were pieces of plywood, but they've replaced them with a selection of springage and, and then a little bit of cloth and a bit of foam. Yeah. But they're just deck chairs, like you say. Yeah, they are, exactly that. So you've got like double suspension. And what I love about that, the thing that I think is a genius piece of engineering, is the fact that you, there's no adjustability in the seats whatsoever. But generally speaking, if you're a taller bloke and a bigger bloke, you weigh more, so therefore the springs extend more, you sink lower. And whatever size you are, your view from the out the window will be perfect. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. And what I also love is the Speedo is located over on the far left side of the windscreen. I can't even and see it. just below that, there's a little round knob. If I pull that out... Oh, there's your windscreen the wipers. wipers. Now, the wipers at the moment... I've got about two degrees of twist. Oh, oh one's fallen. The windscreen wipers come off. We're going to have to pull over. Yeah, pull over, dude. I'll get it sliding down the bonnet. It's sliding down the bonnet, and we've driven over our windscreen wiper. But not to worry, because I'll get it when those really annoyed cars behind. Now, at this point, I'm tempted to go without him. Very tempted to leave without him. Where is it? You 
can't find the windscreen wiper. Have you got it? Go on, same time. Let's get in. Right, we found it. We found, we found the windscreen wiper. <laughs> this is brilliant. Right, so there we go, shall I have a look at that? Okay. Right, that's the world's tiniest windscreen wiper. I wonder, can you put it into first anyway? Oh, you can. So it's so, got a, so um, go on, it's got it a got? centrifugal clutch. Yeah. So if I put it over and into first. Yeah, without your foot on the clutch. Without my foot on the clutch. Right. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't make any difference. So can you pull off? So um, yeah, I can put it into second or third. Go on then. Okay, so. In fact, no, okay, right, over into first, no foot yeah. on the clutch, feet up, I'm in first. Right. Let the handbrake out, Right. indicate, and off we go. And we're off, with only one windscreen wiper blade. What's going on? Is it busted? No. Right. I'm just timing it between gears. I absolutely love this car. I do. It's so full of character. I mean, it's just ridiculous that it ever got made. So it was designed as an agricultural vehicle for farmers, uh, and they reckon that they wanted it. Well, they reckon it's capable of driving across a. So this thing was designed. It was an agricultural vehicle, farmers. It? it was designed to go across a ploughed field, carrying some eggs and a load of weight in it as well. And apparently, it would get you across that field without breaking the eggs. Yeah, that's right. I can believe it as well because it's as smooth as silk. This thing. But why did they ever do that? I mean, it's like me saying, right, I'm designing a new car. I'd want it to be able to carry 14 turkeys, two pepperoni pizzas, and a load of Bruce Springsteen sweatbands. Okay. Why, why would you do that? Because back in the day, that's what France needed. It needed a vehicle that could be used uh, in the agricultural environment. So people would buy a car, a small holder would, could buy a car, just about be able to afford one, and, uh, and they could use it for their normal, everyday, sort of run-of-the-mill stuff that they wanted to do. Right. So it's one car for all. Yeah. Could do anything with it, apart from get over 30-something miles an hour before we managed to get, with Tailwind, uh, 42 or 3 or whatever it was. Well, that's right. But don't you think it's a brilliant, charming vehicle? Absolutely. In terms of marks out of 10 for this thing, I'm going to go straight in with a 10. <laughs> I've, had, I've had more fun at this thing than I've had in any car for a long time. I think you've got to go. I think that's about right. I mean, you know, you know any other car where the windscreen wiper falls off, you'd be really annoyed, but it's just like, oh, it's just dropped this window. No worries. It's just not bothering, is it? It's like, something fell off me. Okay, no worries. It's just like, it doesn't annoy you. You can't be annoyed at this car. It scores out of 10. It's nine and a half, maybe even a 10. Really? Maybe even a 10, yeah. What about from you? Straight up 10. Yeah. I'm going to slap it down with the big 10. I absolutely love this thing. It is just the epitome of charming, that's what it is. It is completely a charming car.